we're gonna do that <clears throat> on full 18 hole rounds. And we're gonna see how this plays out. Presented by EA Sports and the PGA Tour. And we welcome you to one of the most popular golf courses on the PGA Tour. It is Quail Hollow. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Frank, it is just starting to heat up out on the golf course. Fans are streaming in, anticipating a highly contested event with the best golfers in the world. One reason the fans love this course so much, Rich, the Green Mile. It's fine to have a good golf course, but it's got to have a great finish. It's got a great finish, then it becomes a great golf course. Quail Hollow has that great finish of 16, 17, and 18. Frank, that ball's sitting up like it's on plush carpeting. Rich, if you and I had lies like that every time, we'd still be playing this game for a living. Appears to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. That was a solid strike and a good result. Getting set now over the putt. That's not how you picture it, Frank, when you step on that first tee. No, you'd, uh, you'd like to go back to that first tee right now and start again. Well, not in contention, but in for par. Frank, a nice mix of opening holes here at Quail Hollow and the Wells Fargo Championship. Pretty short par three here at the second. 180 yard shot uh, will play more like 175 for the half a club downhill. There's much more green on that right side. If you're not too sure what club to hit, then uh, you should uh, stay away from that left side. So on the putting surface and taking a good look now at this birdie putt here at the second. It's at sneaky distance. Even par early on. A 
Moving on to the third hole now. It's a par four, 452 yards. Big sweeping dogleg left, and the fairway actually goes in the opposite direction of the dogleg. Must hit a good tee shot uh, for two reasons. One, to find the fairway, and also the length of this hole, over 450 yards. Now the approach here at the third. Frank, going back to 1961 when this golf course was open, several different designers have put their imprint on it. That's why there's this great collection of holes, Rich, and, and I think that's why when you look at this Get golf course in, in complete overview, it becomes a great driving golf course. I think you see that when you first step on the, on the tee. Plus this collection of greens. And I, and I think that's all the meanings of the mines. There's no real flat surfaces, there's little pockets. Each green has its own identity. You put it all together and you've got this wonderful test. The original designer, George Cobb, Arnold Palmer made a few modifications in the mid-1980s. And then Tom Fazio came in with a, a redesign back in 97. And then again, as uh, the modern game exploded with distance, uh, 2003. Second shot now at the fourth. Bunkers guarding the front corners of this green. Seems to like it, and headed for the fat part of the green. Good chance now for a birdie. That was an outstanding play. Well, it's almost a guarantee there after that shot. So a tester from four feet. You'd like that one again? Well, I thought that at least pick up a shot. Birdie looked like a sitter. Now par. Holding steady now at two under par. Fifth hole, and we pick up the action. Frank, I've been impressed with the play to this point early in the round. Yeah, it's solid uh, without being spectacular, and that's actually a huge compliment. He makes a great pass at the golf ball. It's powerful, but it's rhythmic at the same time. Wow, that is a monster drive down there, about 315 yards. Playing his second shot here at the par five. Certainly had enough power, just didn't have any touch.
Frank, we remember what Rory McIlroy did here in 2010, his first PGA Tour victory, a 62 in the final round. It was also the first victory for Ricky Fowler. Yeah, and oddly enough, it was in a playoff, and in that playoff, Ricky just pulled out a driver and smashed it down there, then hit a sand on that front left flag, uh, basically the gimme distance. Not only did he win in the playoff, but he beat Rory McIlroy, the then world number one in DA points. And that was the same Ricky Fowler that, remember, in the playoff in 2015 for the Players' Championship, drove the ball in equally daunting fashion um, over those uh, three playoff holes at TPC Sawgrass. safely on deck. Chance for birdie after that beautiful shot. Standing over this putt, concentrating on the read. with that birdie moves to third place. Frank, there's a lot to chew on here as you get to the tee at the 532 yard par 5 seventh. In today's uh, game, 530 plus change you think is incredibly short. And look at the trouble in front of you. Water all the way down the right side and around that right side of the green. Bunkers left. Um, this is not for the faint of heart. Well, those are good numbers right there. 3 2 0. Oh. 320 yards, just crushed it in the fairway. Just saw a player in total control of what he's doing. Didn't miss a green regulation all day long. This is a long putt. Really, the key is the speed. If it drops, that's a bonus. I thought he made that. Pretty good stroke right there, just to hit it through the break. Well, it's a sort of distance. If it goes in, it's a bonus. Well, very impressive and on the move right now. Frank, in modern professional golf, we're seeing more and more drivable par fours, like the eighth here at Quail Hollow. 350 yards. What do you think of this hole? It's not a bad hole. Uh, drivable, some might say, but the angle of the green means it's hard for that tee shot to keep on the green. But the, I think the reward for hitting the driver is trying to sort of aim at that tree just left of the green. And the reason why is then you've got to pitch up the direction of the green. This is a really narrow green. This is a really good way to finish out the front side here at Quail Hollow. 495-yard par 4. Yeah, it's the longest par 4 at Quail Hollow. Um, some say it might be the toughest. I'm not quite in, 
in that camp. And the reason why, that green slopes in from both sides, the left and the right. But uh, you can see why good drivers have done well here, because it's a big reward for thumping a big, long, straight drive down here. They'll be happy with that. In the fairway, now a good chance to attack this hole. This will require a good strike of the golf ball. Pretty long shot into this par four ninth. Should be pretty good right there We're on the safe side. That will be a great look at birdie. Just needs to keep it steady here over the putt. Well, that's just a case of not focusing right there. What a lapse in concentration. Par bid here. Crank a par here. That's just fine. Well, that was a nearly flawless performance on the front side, but, Frank, we know it's an 18-hole game, isn't it? That's right. Now's not the time to pat yourself on the back. Contact, good result. In the fairway here at the 10th, nice way to start off the back nine. Nice position, short grass, second shot. It's an absolute beauty. Rich Slaughter alongside Frank Navalo for EA Sports. We are set at Quail Hollow for the backside, the 10th hole, Frank, 469 yards. And a nice par five where a good drive means that you can reach this par five and two. Uh, just trying to avoid that bunker down the left. Um, second shot's going to play a little downhill. Nicely played shot, about 310 yards down the fairway. So this is where club selection becomes much more important. Uphill, make sure you have enough stick, and then swing away.
Well, this one should be safely on deck here. Wow, Frank, he is dialed in. Yeah, that was just some shot on that. Easy birdie. This one just requires a little bit of focus. Oh, wow, that fun. was so close, Frank. Just time to forget that one. I mean, he couldn't hit that much better. Just five feet left. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Part 412 here at Quail Hollow, 456 yards. Frank, break it down for us. Well, there's no fairway bunkers either side, so you, you feel like there's nothing to work the ball off. And consequently, it's very easy to sneak it in the rough on the left or the right. And then that makes that second shot so much more difficult going up the hill. Um, this is one hole that you have to pick a line on. You really have to know you line off the tee. There's a nice big tree down there in the distance. That's the one you want to work it off. Boy, this is a challenging second shot here to the par 412. It's almost like two greens, Rich. Um, that ridge that goes through the middle about the halfway point, 18 to 20 yards. Anything over that will kick on, and anything short of that runs back to the front. Surely not. That is how it's done right there. What an approach shot. Not a gimme, but well within his range. Pretty much doing everything right this week. 11 under for the tournament. Now the par 3, 13th hole. Frank, this one, 210 yards. Very, very good par 3. This is actually a big green. It's 37 yards deep, but it actually plays small. It has a, a front right portion. There's a roll-off area in the middle, and there's a roll-off area in the back. So don't be deceived by the size of this green. You better be pitching that tee shot right bang in the middle. What a turn of events. Just turned this round upside down. Started off slow, but then managed to pick up the pace and back on track now. Seems to like it. Looks like it's headed for the green. Oh, can't hide the flag stick from that man. Really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. The sense that, that birdie that our young star so explosive is setting himself up for a big weekend run. Well, now we come to the really interesting 345 yard par 414. Frank, I'm thinking that if you're leading, you're probably not going to try to drive this and take on the risk with the water on the left. But if you're behind, you have a chance to make up some ground. Yeah, I have it written in my yardage book, Rich, on this hole. Only good and bad things happen with the driver, nothing in between. Oh, oh sure. that would have been nice. away. This is the second shot at the par four. Right, so beautiful.
Now as we arrive at the par 5 15th hole here at Quail Hollow, 577 yards, Frank, I think a player has to be thinking about doing what Rory McIlroy did in 2010. It's the last of the holes that you can really be aggressive on, Rich. So a good drive down here. I'm well aware of the fact that there's water on the left. This is a good chance to make something happen before you play the green mile. And that's what McElroy did. Hit a tracer, then a five iron, knocked it in for eagle, shot 62, and won for the first time on the PGA Tour. There's always advantage of hitting it further than most, Rich, and straighter than most. When you put the two together, it's just straight up a head start. Frank, golf may be the best sport to follow from this standpoint. You can get closer to the great athlete in golf than you can in any other sport. You, you could stand five feet from Tiger Woods at a tee box as he's getting ready to drive. I mean, that's really unusual in sports. Yeah, it's a different type of spectator sport, especially if you, if you follow your favorite player all the way around the golf course. Because it's not like waiting for your favorite hitter in a, in a baseball game. You know, you've got to wait several innings. You can literally see him hit every single shot, drive through the puck. At last, we have arrived at the start of one of the most daunting finishing stretches in all of golf. They call it the Green Mile, 16, 17, and 18 here at Quail Hollow. The 16th is a par 4, 508 yards, Frank. And this hole was made even more difficult when they pushed that green further left to, uh, to bring the water more in play with the second shot. I mean, it's a great par four. It's strong in every single department. This is looking really good. Terrific golf shot. And now that for an easy birdie. Getting set now over the putt. Continues to amaze yet another birdie. And what a day it's been. Just two holes remaining here at Quail Hollow in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is the signature par three, 221 yards, the 17th. And they have a multitude of tees here. One of the new back tees is actually where the old 16th green was. And uh, um, if you think don't go left is the way to play, then that won't work either because right's not that much good. Uh, this is it. Stand on the tee and you better hit a good shot. Seems to like it. I'm headed for the fat part of the green. Well, it was almost like that's what he wanted to do, but why would you want it to run over the back? Second shot coming out of the rough here. This is all you want in a par three, especially late in the round. You have to carry the water. You have to deal with the pressure. 
at 221 yards, this requires a player's very best. On the process of elimination, don't go long, don't go left, don't go short, and right is marginal. It doesn't leave you with much. He has just hammered this drive here at the 18th, and now he is in a really good position. Make a birdie here in the final hole. of his game right now. That was a splendid approach shot. These putts keep the round together. Pushed it. I mean, that hurts. Been pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. Has his par. So through one round, Frank, our leader really put on a good show today. They certainly did, Rich. It was truly a great performance, especially from T to Green. It's not easy to come out of the gates like that. This is EA Sports coverage of the PGA Tour. Welcome to the home of the Wells Fargo Championship where the likes of Rory McIlroy, Ricky Fowler, and long-hitting J.B. Holmes have all won. It was first open for play in 1961. It has really grown through the years, and it is now played by the best in the world. Rich Loader alongside Frank Novello from EA Sports. Let's jump down to the golf course. He has given this one the full treatment. Perfect release through the ball. And this shot, he is on the fairway over 300 yards. Should be pretty good right there on the safe side well that is an exceptional shot on the green and in position for a birdie yeah it's full melody now now this for birdie came away with par in the previous round and the right stop frank a nice mix of opening holes here at Quail Hollow and the Wells Fargo Championship. Pretty short par three here at the second. 180 yard shot. Uh, we'll play more like 175 for the half a club downhill. There's much more green on that right side. If you're not too sure what club to hit, then uh, you should uh, stay away from that left side.
So on the putting surface and taking a good look now at this birdie putt here at the second. Frank going for another birdie here. Just to get on a real roll. Yeah. That was cruel. That looked like it was certainly going in. Came to the putt excited to make birdie. Now, settle for par. Yeah, a little change in the uh, attitude right now. You've let one go. You've got to really knuckle down there and make sure you don't drop a shot. It's important that this one goes in. This is a strong par four, 452 yards, the third hole. It's a good challenge, Frank. It is big sweeping dog leg left. Actually, in a straight line, it's 315, 320 yards to run out. So if you hit the ball further than that, it's going to have to draw. Otherwise, you'll be hitting the rough on the other side. Uh, still a lengthy shot under there on a green that actually has three different levels. That's a good start to the hole, right down the middle. Now the approach here at the third. This is a good-looking shot. Wow, Frank, he is dialed in. Yeah, that was just some shot on that. Easy. Frank, this Frank, is a this muscular, is a muscular par, par four here, here at just, just under 490, 490 yards, yards the fourth at Quail Hollow, hollow. A, a difficult, difficult proposition. proposition. It is. It is. Fortunately, the tee shot plays a little downhill, downhill. but uh, one so of the difficulties with the tee shot is the fairway kicks, kicks from right to left. So it needs a good one to keep it on the fairway, and another green that has three different levels. Frank, as we look at the second shot here at the fourth, what's the best chance for a birdie? A nice high floating second shot would be the ideal go here. Rich just pitching slightly right of the flag, but you cannot afford to miss this green on the right. Unbelievable. That is one to save us for the rest of the round. It's a big putt right here for Birdie. No problems early, but it's good. It does look good. Uh, this bodes, bodes well. We might be, uh, we might be in for a very, very low round today. Not on the Not fairway on the here. Fairway. This could be a tough be shot tough coming, shot up, coming next. up next. And setting up setting here up in the rough.
So from the rough, back to the fairway. That's the right way to go. Yeah, didn't take the bait. And at least now, he's only going to play the price of a poor tee shot. Still got a good chance, though, getting away with par. Well, this one should be safely on deck here. You can't hide the flag stick from that man. He is just uh, unbelievable, that. That never deviated offline. adds insult to injury to the rest of the field. Another birdie, and the gap even wider. A sensational performance. Wow, Frank, this is all you want in a par three. Two, three, two, 50 two, yards here at the six. Hey, that's hey, what that's these what guys need, especially, especially in a PGA, in a PGA championship. championship. Um, fortunately, uh, fortunately, the hole plays a little bit downhill, but, but 250, 250, whichever way you cut it, is a big par three. Frank, you think about the great rivalries in sports, the Yankees and the Red Sox, Ollie and Frazier, and in golf, Nicholas and Palmer. Great athletes, great teams pushing one another to great heights. It's amazing how that's gone forward, too, because Nicholas and Palmer really became Nicholas and Watson. Then there was like Norman Feldo, but some would say that Feldo by Asteris. Six majors to five was even more important, but in this era that we're in now, I think we're all praying for that woods McElroy rivalry. Um, you know, Woods with 14 majors, McElroy already with four. That really is one to celebrate over. That mess? Are you kidding, Are you kidding me? me? I mean, that I mean, one was, that dead, was center. dead center. Standing, Standing over this putt, putt concentrating, concentrating on the reed. On the reed. Continues, Continues to hold that sizable lead on the rest of the field. Well, Frank, well, Frank an eagle, eagle is in play here at the par 5-7. Five, five, and a 6, and a 7, and an 8, or a 9, actually. This is a potential scorecard wreck with the 7th hole. Uh, many a tee shot has found uh, that creek on the right, trees, uh, problems on the left. There's no question there's a reward for a good tee shot here. Uh, but then there's a the decision on do you go for this bar 5 and 2. It's not overly long, just over 530 yards. It is very tempting. Frank, he is one of the longest hitters in the game, but at some point, you have to hit a fairway. Yeah, he's uh, certainly not the straightest. I think that was a bit you're going to put in the middle. Seems to like it. Headed for the green. Frank, that is how it's done. It's a good That is a lesson in itself. And now a chance for Eagle. 
And they don't come around too often. Opportunities for eagle. You want to seize it if you get the chance. It's a good one here. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Frank, in modern professional golf, we're seeing more and more drivable par fours, like the eighth here at Quail Hollow, 350 yards. What do you think of this hole? It's not a bad hole. Uh, drivable, some might say, but the angle of the green means it's hard for that tee shot to keep on the green. But the, I think the reward for hitting a driver is trying to sort of aim at that tree just left of the green. And the reason why is then you've got to pitch up the direction of the green. This is a really narrow green. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Short par 4 8 here at Quail Hollow, just 350 yards. Frank, players can lay it up and just hit a little baby wedge into the green, but why not go for it in one, try to make something happen? I think both uh, plans work well, Rich. Um, this is one of those holes, the more you think about it, the more complicated it gets. You're going to lay it up, lay it up, you're going to go for it, just aim at that tree and hit it down there. Just take your medicine. Well, this looks good. It certainly is. Frank, such a sweet swing, really a pleasure to watch. Nicely played shot, about 310 yards down the fairway. Well, he's going to have to hit the same club a lot harder or just hit another one. doesn't look too bad. Just maybe a little wide of the front. Chance to close out the front side here with a birdie. It's that sneaky distance. Well, there's an opportunity wasted. Just knock it in for a par, and let's forget about this one. Um, golf is not about perfect, but it's going to hurt the course. Well, that's disappointing. He misses the par putt, and he'll have this for bogey. Rich, I don't think that bogey's going to make any difference. Well, that was a nearly flawless performance on the front side, but, Frank, we know it's an 18-hole game, isn't it? That's right. Now's not the time to pat yourself on the back. Frank had hit the green, but he just didn't have enough backspin. It, uh, you wonder what he was thinking on that.
Yeah. Back here at the par 4 11 at Quail Hollow. Set to see off. What's the right game plan here, Frank? Oh, there's two really. That left bunker off the tee. It's about 265 yards to get it on the fairway. Um, or 308 yards, 310 yards run out there. I've seen players just try and carry the bunker, sort of set up a short arm. And I've seen players like Rory McIlroy just try and blast the driver with a hook on it. Um, both strategies have worked. He has given this one the full treatment. Perfect release through the ball. And this shot, he is on the fairway, over 300 yards. just requires a little bit of focus. Continues to amaze yet another birdie, and what a day it's been. Par 412 here at Quail Hollow, 456 yards. Frank, break it down for us. Well, there's no fairway bunkers either side, so you, you feel like there's nothing to work the ball off, and consequently, it's very easy to sneak it in the rough on the left or the right. And then that makes that second shot so much more difficult going up the hill. Um, this is one hole that you have to pick a line on. You really have to know you can line off the tee. There's a nice big tree down there in the distance. That's the one you want to work it off. And now it's right in his wheelhouse. Good position where he can attack the pin. Yeah, he has all those options now. That ball's sitting up. You can bring it in high. You can bring it in low. The choice is yours. Should be pretty good right there. On the safe side. Oh, side of shot off the shot. Right at the fly. Just dialed in. These putts keep the round together. I thought that was in. Yeah, it looked good. I mean, line, pace. Hard to be critical of that. This for par. That's a solid par par. Now the par three, 13th hole. Frank, this one, 210 yards. Very, very good par three. This is actually a big green. It's 37 yards deep, but it actually plays small. There's a, a front right portion, there's a roll-off area in the middle, and there's a roll-off area in the back. So don't be deceived by the size of the screen. You better be pitching that tee shot right bang in the middle. Too bad. It's about 23 feet away. He didn't hit the flag stick, but he still has a chance.
Very well done. Almost made it. Yeah, there'll be no stress for the next one. Just needs to keep it steady here over the putt. He's made it. Here we are at the par three, 13th hole. It's 210 yards. What does it take here, Frank? It's one actually uh, we'd rather be conservative than aggressive here. And the reason why is this green tends to roll off at the back and the front and the middle there. So uh, just something that pitches more in the central part of the green is really what's required. Good contact, good result. Good tee shot, good lie, and now a good chance to take advantage here on this hole. Ready for a second shot, trying to knock it on the green. here yesterday don't forget this hole's been good to him birdie yesterday I'm trying for another one today well, that was a good looking putt just not falling right now well, sadly he's going to be disappointed just a couple of feet got it for par Now teed up at the 15th hole. It is the final par five here at Quail Hollow, 577 yards. And Frank, I remember this hole well. McElroy stiffed a five iron on his way to making Eagle his first PGA Tour win. That came back in 2010. And um, the opportunity exists again here. Under 600 yards, plays downhill off the tee. Those two bunkers on the right are perfectly situated. That second one about 310 yards to it. So something straight at that one with a little draw will set up that mid iron or long iron that has to be hit very high and uphill. safely on deck. It was almost like that's what he wanted to do, but why would you want it to run over the back? Slight waggle, relaxed arms, ready to go. Start of what some say is the toughest finishing stretch on the PG towards known as the Green Mile. Frank, what makes it so challenging? Well, this hole in particular, Rich, the dog leg right, um, it means it plays every inch of it's just over 500 yards. That bunker you can see down the right, 325 yards to carry that. Um, if you can fly the ball that far, at least you can chew off two thirds of this hole, uh, and that is well required here. Otherwise, it's a long, long second shot. Second shot out of the daunting par four 16th hole. Frank, this is all you want. And if you want to take the safe route, then obviously that's down the right side. That's the uh, quickest way to get to the putting service, and also it's the flattest side. When they start sticking the flag on the left, though, be prepared to pay the price. Short, difficult chip. Long, the ball's going to bounce over the back. Oh 
Frank, this is all you want in a par three, especially late in the round. You have to carry the water. You have to deal with the pressure. At 221 yards, this requires a player's very best. On the process of elimination, don't go long, don't go left, don't go short, and right is marginal. Uh, it doesn't leave you with much. Appears to be a smart shot, Frank. Yeah, no problem here. That's going to fly all the way. Well, he didn't knock down the flag stick right there, but 25 feet, that's not too bad. Birdie here yesterday. This putt again for Birdie. Oh my gosh, that hurts. Well, you couldn't ask for much more than that, except to make it. Getting set now over the putt. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Now to the finishing hole here at Quail Hollow. Frank, what can we expect? If there was a name for this hole, Rich, it should be called Narrows. The, the creek that meanders its way down the left side and actually divides that uh, that hole into really half the size of what a normal par four should be. That makes it hard. The bunker on the right is your bailout area. Um, two, uh, just over 290 yards to get past that. And then the narrowest green that still sits up against the lake. This is just a brutal finish. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. Bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. chance for birdie. Good try, Good try. just didn't quite read the break, Frank. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem, you think, cleaning up here for par. Par attempt here. Workman-like hole, he walks away with a par. Well, Rich, two rounds in the books, and it's easy to see why the leaders are on top of that leaderboard. Excellent performance, but still, a long ways to go in this tournament. EA Sports is proud to present today's PGA Tour coverage. 
What really sets Quail Hollow apart here at the Wells Fargo Championship, the brutal finishing stretch. They call it the Green Mile. And we are excited to bring you all of the tournament action. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Navajo. There's a bunker over there. I think he's headed for it. Rub the sham off. Got away with getting in the bunker there. Frank, a really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. This is a good looking shot. Really good distance control there, playing well to his strengths. Been pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. Great start. Frank, a nice mix of opening holes here at Quail Hollow and the Wells Fargo Championship. Pretty short par three here at the second. 180-yard shot. Uh, we'll play more like 175 for the half a club downhill. There's much more green on that right side. If you're not too sure what club to hit, then uh, you should uh, stay away from that left side. So on a putting surface and taking a good look now at this birdie putt here at the second. And this would be nice, two straight birdies. And that was just a lousy putt right there. No other way to say it. Makeable putt right here. He is currently sitting at one under for the round. Continues to hold that sizable lead on the rest of the field. Moving on to the third hole now. It's a par four, 452 yards. Big sweeping dog leg left, and the fairway actually goes in the opposite direction of the dog leg. Must hit a good tee shot uh, for two reasons. One, to find the fairway, and also the length of this hole, over 450 yards. He has given this one the full treatment. Perfect release through the ball, and this shot he is on the fairway, over 300 yards. Well, there's an opportunity, there's an opportunity wasted. wasted. Just knock it in for a par and let's forget about this one. Um, golf is not about perfect, but it is going to hurt the course. Well, hello there. Really nice putt. Now to the fourth hole here at Quail Hollow, just under 490 yards. 
Yeah, they used to have the tee on the right side, which actually made that tee shot very uncomfortable. Um, when they put the new tee box in on the left side, it's a little easier to hit that fairway because that fairway slopes from right to left. That's a good spot right there. Slim cut. Frank, what are we looking at here on the second shot to the fourth? Another green with three different levels. Uh, this time, though, the green runs away a lot from the right towards the left. You cannot afford to miss the green on the right. Appears to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. Pretty good shot. That ball settles in about 13 feet away. You'd like to think unlucky for some, but um, birdie putt coming up. First par five here at Quail Hollow, the fifth hole, it's 570 yards, and it would seem, Frank, that this tee shot sets up well for a guy like Rory McIlroy. It does. Uh, someone that hits it long and uh, moves the ball right to left, and that's what you're going to have to do here. One of the main reasons for that is not necessarily the dog leg, but the fact that the fairway, Rich, slopes away from you. It slopes to the right and away. Um, so that makes that tee shot um, so much more difficult. Looks like he's going to have a go at it here at the par five. His second shot. Dustin Johnson, Rory McIlroy are playing a different game than guys like me. They step up to this 250-yard par three, and they might hit a five iron. It is a little downhill, but they might be with a middle iron where a lot of us would be with a driver. Well, you see the advantage of that power um, on, on this very hole, not just because of the length they've got to hit it, but the green they're heading into. This green slopes off in both directions, right and left, so you have to land that ball in the middle of the green. So, yeah, it's a big advantage if you can go at this hole with, like, a five iron. Well, too bad, Frank. That one rolled right off the green. It was just coming out so hot. Second shot. Six and a seven and an eight or a nine. But this is a potential scorecard record, the seventh hole. Um, many a tee shot has found uh, that creek on the right, trees, uh, problems on the left. There's no question there's a reward for a good tee shot here. But then there's a the decision on do you go for this bar five and two. It's not overly long, just over 530 yards. It is very tempting. Now set for the second shot here at the par five seventh hole.
Frank, I love a drivable par four. In the modern power game, it really adds an element of excitement. And here we go at the 350-yard par 4-8. Well, you're definitely going to love this one then, Rich, because it ticks all the boxes here. Uh, there's no water in play, just a few bunkers down the left and the one that protects the right side of the green. And you've got a really narrow green, so plenty of reward with uh, minimal risk. That's an absolute beauty. This is the second shot at the par 4. Is it, in your estimation, the toughest? I think the green stops it from being the toughest, Rich, because it does kick in from either side. But when you see holes like this, there's no surprise why the Rory McIlroy's and the Ricky Fowler's are one around here. This is just a great drive and par four. Wow, that is a monster drive down there. 315 yards. This will require a good strike of the golf ball. Pretty long shot into this par four ninth. This one looks like it might have a postage stamp on it. Airmail City. Yeah, look at Send it. Just averted danger right there. So close. What is he able to lock? Standing over this putt, concentrating on the read. Almost fell within just a few inches of dropping. He needs this for par. That's good work. That's good par right there. Excellent front side. Trying to keep it going here on the second nine. He's just playing beautifully. Hitting so many good shots. Giving himself so many opportunities. Can he keep it going? I mean, he just blasted it down the fairway, well over 325 yards. Right in the heart of the fairway, green light special. Frank, you've been around this game for a pretty long time. Are players, in fact, more athletic today than they were, say, 20, 25 years ago? There's no question, Rich, they are, but we're borrowed from other sports. Uh, if you can't make the player better, you can make them more athletic. And in the end, you're still making the golfer better. Wouldn't call it a great approach shot, but it, it still ends up in the fringe. Okay, a little bit of magic from here. It's, the hole's not over. That's how the best in the world play it, right? Well, I feel a little lucky that it went in, but it was always going to be close. Frank, on this backside at Trail Hollow, a player does have a good chance to get off to a good start with that par 5 tenth and now a relatively short par 4 11th where a player with a good drive could stick a short iron in their hands. Yeah, this is uh, one you're going to have to make a decision. You can just play this as a straight sword dog leg left par 4 and put a 3 wood or a long iron up there and a you know, 9 iron or something like that into the green. Or, if you want it, you can try and blast the drive around the corner. Um, I don't know if that's the more prudent play, but uh, it's fun.
Well, this one should be safely on deck here. It just came out blazing. As soon as it hit the green, it was never going to stop. That is professional with a capital P right there. That's stealing. Frank, I think the mark of a good golf course design changing directions. We go from a right to left hole, now at the 12th to a left to right hole. Yeah, there's no two holes at 12 hollow that look the same. Um, and this one's slightly downhill, uh, fairway tilts a little bit to the right. And, and it's a bit of a sleeper. And plus you add in on top of that 450 yards plus. Um, this is a fairway that has to be hit. Great line. What a great shot. He has really hit it a long way. Boy, this is a challenging second shot here to the par 412. It's almost like two greens, Rich. Um, that ridge that goes through the middle about the halfway point, 18 to 20 yards. Anything over that will kick on, and anything short of that runs back to the front. Just made it. I cannot believe it. I was thinking we might get it close. And <laughs> just a great shot. Now the part three 13th hole. Frank this one 210 yards. Very, very good par three. This is actually a big green. It's 37 yards deep, but it actually plays small. There's a, a front right portion, there's a roll-off area in the middle, and there's a roll-off area in the back. So don't be deceived by the size of the screen. You better be pitching that tee shot right bang in the middle. Frank, I think he flushed that one. Oh, this is this is going, going, gone. It was almost like that's what he wanted to do, but why would you want it to run over the back? the really interesting 345 yard par 4 14 frank i'm thinking that if you're leading you're probably not going to try to drive this and take on the risk with the water on the left but if you're behind you have a chance to make up some ground 
Yeah, I have it written in my yardage book, Rich, on this hole. Only good and bad things happen with the driver. Nothing in between. Oh, my goodness. That is on in one. Wow. What an incredible shot. This one just requires a little bit of focus. Full 577 yards. Frank, you remember what Rory McIlroy did here in 2010, that final round, 62? I certainly do, Rich. That was an amazing run on the second nine. And holes like this, too. He just stood up here with a driver and just obliterated it down there with a nice draw. Took those bunkers out of play and just set up a mid iron. Mm. <laughs> drive. Just tattooed that. Now the second shot here at this part five. Like it's hitting for the bunker. Well, too bad. He'll have to play from the bunker. Looking to splash this softly onto the green. Hole here at Quail Hollow, 577 yards. Frank, I think a player has to be thinking about doing what Rory McIlroy did in 2010. It's the last of the holes that you can really be aggressive on, Rich. So a good drive down here. I'm well aware of the fact that there's water on the left. This is a good chance to make something happen before you play the green mile. And that's what McIlroy did. Put a tracer, then a five iron, knocked it in for eagle, shot 62, and won for the first time on the PGA Tour. Seems to like it. Headed for the fat part of the green. I mean, really, on top of his game right now. That was a splendid approach shot. These cuts keep the round together. Oh, I thought he had that. Man, I just pushed it. Pushed it. Boy, that, hurts. that hurts. Getting set Getting now set over now the putt. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. 
Just two holes remaining here at Quail Hollow in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is the signature par three, 221 yards, the 17th. And they have a multitude of tees here. One of the new back tees is actually where the old 16th green was. And uh, um, if you think don't go left is the way to play, then that won't work either because right's not that much good. Uh, this is it. Stand on the tee and you better hit a good shot. Appears to be a smart shot, Frank. Yeah, no problem here. That's going to fly all the way. Well, that's how you play the game right there. Knock it on the game and give yourself a good look at birdie. That's that sneaky distance. Came to the putt, excited to make birdie. Now, settle for par. Yeah, little change in the uh, attitude right now. You've let one go. You're gonna really knuckle down there. Make sure you don't drop a shot. It's important this one goes in. Now to the finishing hole here at Quail Hollow. Frank, what can we expect? If there was a name for this hole, Rich, it should be called Narrows. The, the creek that meanders its way down the left side and actually divides that, uh, that hole into really half the size of what a normal par four should be. That makes it hard. The bunk on the right is your bailout area. Um, two, uh, just over 290 yards to get past that. And then the narrowest green it still sits up against the lake. This is just a brutal finish. This is way too much. Wow, lucky break right there, Frank. Well, that's what everyone else is gonna say, except him. Birdie putt coming up. Had a par on this hole yesterday. There you have it. Round three is finished, and it was a good one, Frank. Yeah, after three rounds, then uh, you really could start to see who could take home the trophy when it's all said and done. Great play, though, up until this point. Uh, round four should be an absolute thriller.
Today's coverage brought to you by EA Sports and the PGA Tour. Thanks for joining us here today in Charlotte, North Carolina for the final round of the Wells Fargo Championship. Frank, what do we have out here today? Well, if history uh, has a chance of repeating itself, remember those great closing rounds by Rory McIlroy, uh, that 62, that uh, was one of the best rounds ever shot that year back in 2010. And, of course, that playoff, too. Ricky Fowler back in 2012. We actually beat out Dan, world number one. Roy uh, McIlroy with that stunning drive down the finishing hole and brilliant wedge to a tight flag. Uh, this golf course, it can give it, it can take it away, but for us, from where we're sitting, Rich, we'll enjoy the view today. No doubt about it. Playing this par four, still not on the green after that second shot. But still not done. Um, a good third shot. Maybe get away here with par. Appears to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. Really in control of this hole. Birdie yesterday and another opportunity on the way. Birdie try again here today. Had a nice birdie on this hole yesterday. This start, birdie, birdie to open the round. Frank here at the third, players facing a challenging tee shot. Uh, for a number of reasons, Rich. One, that the hole bends to the left. Uh, two, that the fairway starts to run out. And three, the length of the second shot. Um, you get rewarded the better you hit your tee shot down here. Oh, it's fine. Nice long tee shot there and a good lie, Frank. Well, he's going to have to hit the same club a lot harder or just hit another one. Frank, over the course of the last 15 years or so, there have been a number of initiatives within the game of golf just to try to grow the sport. Yeah, we've seen the PGA Junior League, which is a series of competitions, obviously, for juniors to play. But the first tee really is worldwide now, just to try and introduce some players from all over the world into the game of golf. They're introduced with club professionals. They learn skills that are essential, really, to play the game of golf. But uh, in 2014 was a real step, what I think, in the right direction. To, to showcase the junior talent around the world with the drive, chip and putt, where you actually get a chance to play the drive, chip and putt final at Augusta National, the home of the Masters. Imagine young kids, boys and girls, eight years old, 11 years old, being able to go home and tell their friends, tell their families, 
hey, I have something in common with Jack Nicholas, with Arnold Palmer, with Phil Mickelson, with Tiger Woods. I won at Augusta National Golf Club. Right out of the center of the bat. Did you hear that? Second shot. Sit down. Get down. Oh, this is this is gone. Didn't check, Frank. Yeah, just not enough spin on that. Um, really, I mean, that almost like took that first bounce and just ricocheted forward. Wow, he moved that a long ways, right in the fairway. Okay, the second shot now at this par five. This is a good looking shot. And he's set up for his third shot here, looking to get it on the green with this. Tremendous shot right there. Touch, nerve, had it all. And he has the bottom of the bout. Frank, this is good golfing weather. Nice, strong breeze. Our computer gives us uh, 23 feet, Rich. 
really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. Frank, that's not one you're necessarily thinking about making. No, just a uh, good putt, though. There's no two ways about that. He's putting well. Has his par. Good. That is a fantastic long shot. There's no way he could hit that without a towel breeze. Surely that breeze had to help there. This could be a huge momentum swing here, Frank. Yeah, one more good swing, and he's going to have an eagle putt coming up. I know you don't want to get ahead of yourself, but it is well on the cards. Should be pretty good right there. On the safe side. That is just an outstanding shot right there. And now a chance for an eagle. Not a gimme, but well within his range. How can you leave an eagle putt short? Well, you can't. I mean, that's embarrassing. One, you can leave a par putt, baby putt. An eagle putt. Might want to just shut the game down and quit playing. Good putt. Couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, just the lie there, too. It is sitting up like it's teed up. Right in the heart of the fairway. Green light special. This has been a great performance so far, but Frank, a long ways to go. Do you ever worry about complacency? Yeah, sometimes it just looks like it's too easy. At the moment, the putts are going in, the iron shots are going close enough. But uh, some things, you know, they don't happen by, by accident. He's got to still keep concentrating right now. Rich, I thought he could get this part. That just is amazing. Just a mind blower right there. Absolutely incredible. He made the shot. Given this one the full treatment, perfect release through the ball, and this shot he is on the fairway over 300 yards.
Well, this one should be safely on deck here. Chance to close out the front side here with a birdie. Some snap that. Well, you're not going to make that putt all the time, but you'd like to at least get it to the hole. If he keeps putting like that, he's going to be an announcer in no time. He'll take par and move on. In the fairway here at the 10th, nice way to start off the back nine. And now the second shot here at this par five. Frank had hit the green, but just didn't have enough backspin. Yeah, it, uh, you wonder what he was thinking on that. Frank, what's your thinking on this approach shot here at the 11th? The second shot here at 11 is anything other than straightforward. There's a bit of a ridge in the middle of the screen, so there's a tendency for that ball to roll around a little bit. Be precise. So the second of the par four goes begging, and now I'll have to rely on the short game. Yeah, but a short game, as we all know, can uh, redeem a lot of mistakes. Let's see if he does it here. No putter, no problem. Slams that into the cup.
good tee shot right in the short grass. Boy, this is a challenging second shot here to the par 412. It's almost like two greens, Rich. Um, that ridge that goes through the middle about the halfway point, 18 to 20 yards. Anything over that will kick on, and anything short of that runs back to the front. like that's what he wanted to do, but why would you want it to run over the back? Nice approach shot. He'll be happy with that. Continues to hold that sizable lead on the rest of the field. Strong winds have been a factor all day here, Frank. What's the key to scoring low in conditions like this? Well, sometimes you've almost got to uh, make the ball go to ground. You've just got to keep it out of those high breezes and uh, play away from the trouble. Not terrible, but not his best. An outside chance, really, for, uh, for Birdie, but um, really, it was a, a rather poor approach shot. Looks like he just misread that. You don't want to let this one get away. This is about concentration and focus at this point. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Shot does finish up on the green, but it sets up for a very difficult putt. Frank, I'm not saying he should pull out driver here, but this is a long putt. Greens are fast, though. You never know. Good line, good pace. Might have a chance. Gosh, that hurts. Well, that's not the way you wanted to start out the backside here. 
yeah, you can't afford from uh, inside 10 feet. It just, you feel like you have to make those. And um, I mean, they really sting when they miss. Continues to amaze yet another birdie. And what a day it's been. Well, Frank, the wind is really starting to pick up. You've got to fix that on the direction now. If you get the, the direction wrong and uh, or mistime one of those gusts, all sorts of problems. game's about rhythm. It, when you have good rhythm, it just looks effort, effortless. To hit the ball 300 yards through the air, that easy. That's in the fairway. Playing his second shot here at the par five. That one is bunker bound, it looks like. Not missing by much today, but enough to again be in the bunker. Well, in the sand, but it has been raked nicely, looking for something positive. There's a bunker over there. I think he's headed for it. <laughs> he just missed the bunker. This is an approach shot that will really test a player. Second to the 16th. down oh this is this is gone wow lucky break right there Frank. Yeah. that's what everyone else is going to say except him just needs to keep it steady here over the park and it drops for birdie Seems to like it, and headed for the fat part of the green. Getting set for this next shot from the rough, what does the player need to be careful of here, Frank? 
Well, this is where we're going to see exactly how good they are because, you know, that's not exactly the best light, but it's sort of doable if you, if you know what you're doing. Tom Weisskopf was one of my idols growing up. I loved the way he swung. That swing right there reminds me of my idol. And it looks like Rory McIlroy fights sticking the follow through. There you go, 310 yards. Caught all of that one and straight as well. It's in the fairway. Wow, Frank, he is dialed in. Yeah, that was just some shot on that. Easy birdie. It has all come down to this. A chance to win the Wells Fargo Championship. Everybody loves him. Birdie on the card. Frank, year in, year out, the Wells Fargo Championship delivers the excitement and the great champions. And this year... Well, didn't disappoint. No, joining the list of, uh, you know, the Ricky Ricky Fowlers, the Rory McIlroy's, the J.B. Holmes, Sean O'Hare, Tiger Woods, Furyk, list goes on. These are the best players in the game. So adding your name to that list really is the hallmark of a very, very successful professional golfer.